Hello people! So, apparently you guys really liked the video I did yesterday, or the other day about, you know, the stuff I had ready, and was going to ship out. So, I had a couple requests to do more videos, and you know what? I'm going to oblige. So, first off, for Brother Derek, you hear that nice snap? Yep, yeah, that's a nice, nice thing here. Alright, real quick video. First thing we did this one, we put a bitching hand rub finish all along this, front, this flat. I'm going to touch that up before I send it out, but it's good enough to show on the video. A couple scratches, you know, just a, you may make it perfect before I send it to him. It has been here for a while, as a side note. There's a reason for that. And I don't know, maybe I might have to, <laughs> might have to hire some people, you know, to, to pay the person who owns this and visit. And to maybe, you know, bust a few knee ca kneecaps, if you know what I mean. And yes, I'm joking. Derek, I'm not going to have someone break your kneecaps. Yet. <laughs> Alright. So, we have a annoying material, but I managed to get it to work. Uh, Dew Carter or Drew Carter, whatever the hell it's called. Expensive stuff. It's I think this set of handles alone was like 50 bucks. It's got like a, a I don't know, I describe it as like a, sort of a Damascus-y finish, you know. This is pink and blue, and I put some oil on there to darken it to make it look a little bit less fruity, I guess. But it's really nice stuff. It has a tendency to see a drill bit and say, fuck you, I'm going to grab you and just destroy this. So, luckily I got it to work. It had a couple close calls, but it works nicely. The only thing that I don't like is that there was a, there is one void. Like, the only void in the whole damn material was right at the liners. It's barely noticeable what it is there. There isn't really much I can do about it, and I don't really think Derek cares too much. So, yeah. As you can see, very nice symmetrical to grind. Rant, uh, the rad poisoning finish, all along the spine and along the flats. Comfortable in the hand. Derek's got the same size hand I do, because, you know, I measured it and I said, Hey Derek, shoot me measurements a while back, and we both have the same hand. So yeah, it made life a little bit easier for me. It fits nicely, and it is sharp. This is actually probably the sharpest knife that's leaving the shop recently. Or at least the best cutter, and there's a reason for that. Derek specifically asked me to make this knife very, very hard. We are talking 64 Rockwell people. That is very high for a blade. Blades are usually 60. I have my blades tempered, my D2 blades tempered professionally at 59 to 60. I heat treated this personally at 64-ish. I don't know. I don't have an exact number. I don't have a Rockwell tester. But that's what the number we're talking about. So that's high, okay? He also requested that it be ground very lean. He wanted this to be a lean slicing machine. He's kind of into the experimental blades. You know, he wants to have science experiments kind of stuff. So he wanted to make the sharpest knife he possibly could. And this is nowhere near as sharp as you could possibly get. This is 1084. So, it's nuts. People ask me when they talk about steels, what steel's the best? I say there is no best steel, it's different. They're all just different. D2 is great for holding an edge forever, and that sort of stuff, but it does not get as sharp as 1084. 1084 gets ridiculously sharp. If I had to make a knife to shave my penis with, I would make it out of 1084, as a side note. And I'm not going to be shaving my knife with a penis anytime soon. Especially one not this large. Anyway, as, a, as an interesting side note there, uh, titanium hardware with a chain ring bolt at the end. These two match the blade. That's, that's, uh, I brushed them both at the same grit, so it kind of matches. And Derek sent me some Kydex. How very nice of him. A Digicam stuff. I don't really think I'll be stocking it because it's kind of a pain in the ass. But we have Digicam Kydex. Very solid retention. It will break in a bit because there's a couple... That's quite a serious um, divot, so it's going to break in a little bit over time. But it's very solid, it's not going anywhere. A little bit tough to get out, but you know, that'll break in. And it's pretty easy to fix if you don't like it. You can use a hairdryer or something. Alright, next. This one's cool. Bit of a sneak peek. We got the sheath. Now, you, the people who've been following me know what this is. That's right. We are talking grunts. So this is the second one. I showed the first one on the other day. Yeah, Tuesday, whatever it is. Yeah, I've lost track of time. It is it is 
early in the morning. I mean, the sun hasn't even come up yet, so that's a little bit of indication about when I'm filming this. So if the lighting's a little bit shit, bear, me with, bear with me. Alright, so, what do we do here? This is for a very good customer of mine. Great guy. Funny guy, actually. It's always... It's always funny when people joke around in the in the emails when we're talking and you know discussing prices, that sort of stuff. It's always it's fun, you know. Sometimes it's good to have a joke with a guy on the on the thing. Anyway, side note, fu funny guy. Handles or blade thing, the thing, the thing we're working on here, we're looking at here. First off, we have a sand a hand rubbed satin finished blade. That's 320 grit, which is usually where I leave my hand rubs at because anything further than that. I think it's a little bit more susceptible to scratching. 320 grit is very not is very uh, irresistant to scratches. It, it um, compared to like maybe a 1200 satin. A 1200 satin, you just look at it wrong, it'll scratch. But this is still pretty scratch prone, just because it's shiny. Anyway, so 320 grit's hand rub. I took extra time to make sure it was as perfect as I possibly could. Could so this is probably one of the best ones I've done yet. D2 tool steel, so again, it'll hold an edge forever. It's great stuff. And titanium handles, that's a new for that's a new one for the grunts. Uh, I actually kind of enjoyed doing this one. It was a little bit of a pain in the ass, you know, sculpting and you know going through the belts, but it was fun to do. I rounded this and then I contoured it. I oh, sorry, I contoured this all around and then I put this rock pattern in there. And then I heat colored it, which took quite a while because you know it's quite two massive slabs of titanium. And I did them together, and I don't know why, but they look completely different on either side. So, don't know what, why, I don't really know what to do about it, but it actually, it's not too bad, and it looks really nice. Yeah, I was hoping that they'd be a little bit more even, because actually, I had these clamped, well not clamped, but I had them laying against each other, and I heated them at the same time, and it just didn't do what I wanted to. And the screws, I really like these bolts. Usually we use chain ring bolts here but I don't have the bits and equipment necessary to do that, and it'd have to be. I mean, maybe down the road I can do it, but at that point we're talking custom drill bits and custom reamers and that sort of stuff, which is... Exactly. I don't even, I don't want to invest in that unless I know I can get... You know, unless I have, you know, customers for it. Anyway, so the bolts are cool because I had the idea, and I shared it with Gabe, and he thought it was pretty cool, that we would heat color these gold, and then we'd put it in a drill and we'd satin it so that only it'd have this little speck of gold in the middle here. And I really like how it comes out. It is very nice. The knife has some considerable weight to it. It's not too bad, but the titanium certainly adds some heft. And it feels really nice. It has a very nice expensive kind of feel, if that makes sense. I mean, you have the... It has weight to it. I wouldn't carry this as a neck knife. It's a bit too heavy for that, but it has this expensive... You know, the same kind of thing, you know, that, that weight, the really cool feel to it. It has nice ergonomics, and I've contoured and everything and polished all the edges, so it's very, very nice in the hand. It is also sharp. If I get, get a cutting test from around the camera again, it's not as sharp as the other one. It's a little bit thick, well, it's a lot thicker behind the edge. And it's also thick steel, which I had at the time, and I sold them as thick knives. The next run, I am taking orders for grunts as a side note. They're not going to be this thick, probably. They're going to be much thinner, you know, lighter, easier to carry around the neck if you wanted to. And, you know, less expensive construction-wise, because I could do some weird things to get these to work. But it's sharp. I kind of cut around the camera. Hit it real quick on the strop again. So there we go. This has also got the Kydex sheath. The issue I had with this Kydex sheath is that because the handle's so heavy, I would not go, you know, run it, running this upside down with paracord around the neck or something because there is the possibility it could shake out. I mean, it's fine. I can shake it. It's not going to fall out and there's no rattle this way. But, and it comes out and easy. It comes out and in pretty easy. But the issue is the weight of the titanium puts a lot of force in there. So if you like, if you have this around your neck and you go on a jumping jumping castle or something, you might end up losing it, but I don't think it's going to happen. I just don't wear it around your neck, Gabe. But I talked to him about it, he said, cool, it's going to work perfect for in the pocket carry, which is how I designed these, which is why they have such a wide sheath as a side note. 
these things fit perfectly in the pocket. They just disappear in the front pocket. Because if you look at it, it's about the size of a wallet, at least the sheath is, and you have this little bit hanging out, so it works really nicely for front pocket carry. All right, last one. We're pushing 10 minutes here, so hopefully I can keep this short. I don't know how much memory I've got on the memory card, so if the card craps out, well, yeah, it's going to be great. So, you, have, you guys haven't seen the prototype of this yet, YouTube guys. If you follow me on any other of my platforms, you have, except Pinterest, because I don't do much on Pinterest. I don't really know much about it, but anyway, I have a Pinterest, so if you want to check out Pinterest and see absolutely nothing, go ahead. All right, so we have the crazy grind. There's a bit of a story behind this. I called the guy up, or I messaged the guy, and I said, I've got this really crazy idea, and I shot him a picture of this this knife without the grind on it, and like I'd sketch, I'd taken like a, a sharpie, and I'd drawn this really rough grind on it real quick, and he's like, and I said, are you cool if I do this? I'm in a crazy mood. He took one look at it and said, hell yeah, just do it. I want this thing to be awesome, and I want it to be different, and I think that's exactly what we did. And I'm going to have to keep my overview of this short so the video upload isn't going to rape me. But we have Anzo Patent Blue G10 with black hardware. First time using, well, second time now using black hardware again. I only got them recently and I really like them. We have a black thumb stud and a black backspacer. So it's black and blue, you know that two-tone color there thing. And the anodizing. The titanium frame and blade, I anodized by heating the shit out of it. I got it very, very hot. I mean, probably the same temperature you'd heat treat D2 at. I was a little bit worried that maybe it'd warp or something and do some weird stuff, but luckily it stayed straight. And all that sort of stuff, so we haven't got an issue. I haven't sharpened this yet, so... It's not completely done, and I also have to Loctite it. I told the guy I'm going to hold on to it for a couple days, just to see how it wears and to lock tight these things in. We have a carbide edit on there to, you know, increase life of your knife. Hey, you even rhymed. That's nice. If you're wondering how well titanium is going to hold its edge, I have a video. I'm not going to say I'm going to put it in the, in the description. I might. I will probably forget. It is called Titanium Knives Don't Suck or Why Titanium Knives, something like that. Why t Titanium Knives Don't Suck. Look at it in my channel, you'll find it pretty easily. And where I made a whole titanium knife and I rambled on about it for like 20 minutes. Nice in the hand, especially in this grip, which is how I designed these friction folders. Because that, you're not losing it because, you know, you've got that, the tang there is going to stop it opening. And it's great for opening packages or slicing or whatever. And the negative angle also helps with that. It's comfortable in the hand and it's also not very large. I don't, I can't give you specs on the blade length right now, but it's, I don't think it's much longer than three inches, personally, I can't, I don't know, my, my Imperial is not good, I like the Matrique system, that's right, Matrique, you know, I live in Australia, so, the metric system's good, I don't know what's wrong with the Americans, you and your bloody inches, it's, it's horrible, horrible stuff, I don't know what's, I don't know what kind of shit you're smoking that you think that's a good idea. Because every single time I'd buy drill bits of stop pins, i got to make this freaking... i got to act like I'm, you know, solving some sort of puzzle or something and decode this shit. As a side note, that I, I don't like Imperial. And we also have a, a, a titanium thumb stud. I kind of left the satin. I wanted it to kind of match the edge in this carbide a bit. I don't know. I might darken it up on this side like I did here. Sorry about that guys, the memory card decided to crap its pants. But we're back now, and we're just about done anyway. So I left this shiny just to kind of match the edge and the carbide. And I also, I went with the, um, the flow through backspace kind of thing. I like doing them this way because it's kind of like a, a best of both worlds. It's got the look of a backspacer, but it also has that flow through, you know, advantage that standoffs have. And also the blade is centered. I, uh... It looks a little bit off-center because, you know, chisel grind and all that. It is actually centered. Kind of, you can tell from this, it is centered. But yeah, also the thumb studs on the wrong side. I know that. That's just there for, um, for looks. It doesn't actually serve much of a purpose. If you don't like it, you can just unscrew it and take it off, or you can switch it around or whatever. It is just a threaded nut here, or a threaded... Um, 
threaded thumb stud, so it's very easy just to swap around or whatever. You have, you're not really limited in what you do. Also, you have this like, here you've got much more brands and sort of stuff, and it's radiating this way. So it's got this really hot look. It looks like the, it's really, you know, heat. Like, it looks hot. I, I don't know how else to say it. But it's radiating this way, and it matches here a little bit, so it has this really, really nice look. I really like this knife. Comfortable in the hand and all that good stuff. So yeah, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. It helps me out a bunch. Every like, every, every comment, all that stuff. So please, comment, like, all that sort of, you know, YouTube-y stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Dobby, uh...